Hey, I want to I want to tell you guys. Listen, um, um, I want to. We we are gonna absolutely have a time of prayer. But let's say let me just say a word of prayer. We want to welcome Sky. This is our first time here. Friend of Claudia's. Yes, yay. She's from Alaska. God bless your soul. All right. Well, let, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you so much. And God, we just thank you right now for your goodness and your graciousness, Father. Oh, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are present here today. We ask that you minister to every single person. But Lord, we, we also thank you that we will minister to you. And Lord, we give you worship and praise. Lord, guide every moment of, of, of our study tonight and our time together. We just give you praise and glory and honor. We ask you, Lord, that you cover every single person who's on their way. If maybe they're stuck in traffic on the 101 or whatever it is, Lord, we just pray your angels of protection around them. And, Lord, we just pray your covering over us this evening. Holy Spirit, we want to hear what you have to say. We want to see what you want to teach. So we thank you for all these things right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You guys could be seated. Amen. We're just about to go over a prayer this evening that uh, I wrote out for everyone. And so uh, maybe, Claudia, what you can do is maybe we can get like a, uh, I can just email you a copy. and Maybe you can post it. But this is a good prayer of, on Ephesians chapter 6, and it has to do with the armor of God. And so I wrote this out for you guys because um, um, I've been praying it over myself every day and it's declarations. And, and uh, when you talk about the armor of God, we, we know that there's different uh, things like the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, uh, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, um, the shield of faith. Um, and, and so on and so on when you study that. And those are things that God just gave us those analogies to show us these powerful things. But it's not about a piece of armor. It's literally about these points. And if you see them highlighted, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, um, uh, salvation, the word of God and praying in the spirit. So I just want to read one of these that just ministered to me so much. So just remember, this is something that if you want to break them down, uh, because there's seven of them. If you want to break them down once, uh, say them one prayer a day, or you want to pray it like I, I just pray the whole prayer over myself out loud every day. Um, I really think it'll be a blessing to you. But listen to this on faith. I just wanted to highlight faith. It's so good. But it says this, I declare that I am a child of radical faith. What cannot be seen is greater than what can be seen. I serve the creator of the universe. His ways are so much greater than my own. I declare that faith is a lifestyle for me and that I partner with God to see heaven on earth. I am a very dangerous person to the kingdom of darkness because the shield of faith I have is strong and mighty. I will do great exploits today and will not bow down to a mediocre version of myself. I am a mountain mover and a demon destroyer. I laugh at Satan's plans and attacks because I know in whom I trust. There is more power in my finger than the darkness surrounding me. The darts of the enemy bounce off of me like a flimsy piece of foam. I press ahead and march to the beat of the one who loves me. I rest in the valley because your shield covers me. I smile at mountains as I decide whether to move them or climb them. I am cautious with my mouth because my words are powerful and filled with faith. I am a person of faith and will not look back but keep my eyes fixed on the one who died for me. Amen. Isn't that good? I'm telling you, man, it's so powerful. And, and just, you know, I just was writing away and the Lord gave it to me. So I gave that um, to you guys. And so um, I wanted you to have that. I will be handing it out on Sunday, but I wanted you guys to get it in advance. I might be calling on some of you to, to read it on Sunday. So, so listen, I want to go over a couple of things with you. I do want to say to you that we're in a very pivotal point of these studies because starting, uh, well, next week, we'll be putting into operation everything that we've been learning for about eight weeks now. And so um, it, it's going to be huge. And I'll, <clears throat> I'll share with you what I mean by that as we study um, the scriptures. And so um, I want you to go to Acts in the first chapter, Acts in the first chapter. And I want to say to you while you're turning in Acts chapter one, and I'm going to need some help reading. I'm going to call on some people um, or, you know, volunteers. And I want to say this to you that you guys need to know something. 
Um, and I boldly say this, and if you don't believe this, uh, you can go study the scriptures for yourself. And, um, um, and if you want to talk to me about it later, you can. Uh, we're not going to talk about it now. <clears throat> but unequivocally, let me say this to you. What happened on Sunday uh, in, in Texas has nothing to do with God or his will or his plan. It has nothing to do. That is demonic. It is devilish. It is evil. And um, I, I just got an email recently from someone who had a guest speaker at, at a church in another country, <clears throat> and they were telling me that the guest preacher said that everything, that ha everything bad that happens um, is God's will. And I thought that was the most ridiculous statement ever. And so what I want to say to you guys is that God is good and God does, is not going to kill when John chapter, uh, John chapter 10 verse 10 says clearly that Satan has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly or, or have it to the full. So, so um, you know, that, that, that has nothing to do with God. Uh, the book of 1 Peter says that Satan roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so what I want to let you guys know is don't believe that foolishness. You know, when you begin to look at that situation, we live in a fallen world. We live in a world that needs Jesus so bad. And, and he, let me just say this to you clearly. No one will ever come to Christ unless they hear the message of the good news. They won't come to Christ unless they hear Jesus. And so the, uh, uh, Romans uh, chapter 10 talks about that. How will they hear unless there's a preacher. And that word preacher is not a position like, like, a, you know, like I'm a pastor or a preacher. That, mean, that means anyone who will share the good news. Amen? So, so I want you to want to walk you through a couple of things because we're in preparation. Next week, we'll be going out to the USC area. We're going to be breaking up into teams. And I'm so excited about this. I pray that all of you uh, that, that, that can would come out and we're going to break up into teams of three or four. We're going to pray at 7 p.m. till 7.30 and then at 7.30 we'll, we'll, we'll break up and, um, and um, I guarantee you that you might be scared and uh, meaning scared because we're afraid of one thing and it's rejection. That's the one thing we're afraid of. We're not afraid of anything other than rejection when we share about the love of Jesus. And so, but I want to say this to you. How do you overcome this fear how do you overcome it and the bible is absolutely clear on how we overcome it so here's the thing so in in acts chapter one uh let's go to verses three um three to five verses three to five who can who can read that uh for me verses three to five anyone have that go ahead Okay, so what is going on here? Jesus has resurrected. Jesus has resurrected from the dead. He is speaking to about 500 people right now. So he's speaking to them. He is resurrected. So he's speaking to disciples here. And so he, this is what he says. He says, I want you to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise that my Father has for you. And so, so he says here, uh, it says, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, can someone else read verses 6 to 8, if you could? Can someone do that? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead back. Who, who is that? Yeah, Nina? Yeah. <clears throat> Will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria 
You will be my, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so, so let me just say this to you. Last week, we talked about Jesus sending out the 12. Remember that? We talked about the 12 and the 70. So when he sent them out, he said to go, he says, when you go out, he says, find the man of peace. Now, now, if you were there last week, we broke this down more. It's a little bit more elaborate. But he's, here's the thing. Find the man of peace. What does that represent? That represents someone who will receive the word of God. Okay? So he says, find the man of peace. And he says, and, and, and he says find the house of peace. So when you go in, he says, eat what is set before you. And he goes into all these things. Now, what does that relate to in the, in the New Testament church? Listen, we are to look for houses of peace. Not just where we're meeting right now. I'm talking about the shell that we live in. We, we are to find people that will hear the message, receive the message. And you know what? Sometimes we plant seeds, sometimes we water, but it's God who gives the increase. So here's the thing. So, so he says, you're going to receive power. And, and I referred to last week when we talked about what did he tell them to do? So when he told them, he says, find the man of peace. And this is what he gave them their instruction. He says, when you go out, heal all the sick among you. Heal all the sick. Now, we, we said this last week. He could have said, feed everybody. He could have said, pray with everybody. And, and of course, they prayed. Of course, they fed people. Of course, they loved on them. He, he, they, they did all kinds of things, I'm sure. They fellowshiped. They did all this. But he told them, heal everyone. So if you get a directive, go to these people and I want you to heal everyone there. And I want you to cast out any devil. That's pretty specific. So Jesus resurrects from the dead. The Bible says for 40 days he taught these people about the kingdom of God. Check this out. So he says you're going to receive power. Now once again, this is a big deal. His first directive after Resur being resurrected from the dead. His first directive. What is his directive? You're going to receive power and you'll be what? What will you be? What will you be? You'll be witnesses. Now, he could have said, you're going to receive power and go heal all the sick. You're going to receive power and go cast out devils. You're going to receive power and go give a prophetic word. You're going to receive power and feed the hungry and clothe the naked. He could have said anything, but he said, you're going to receive power. And this is what he said to be a witness, to be a witness. You will receive power and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So what does that, what does Judea represent? That represents your neighborhood. That's where you live, your area where you live. So he says Judea, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jerusalem, Judea. What is that? That could be, you know, the next city over. You know, and, and then he goes on and he says here, uh, Samaria. Now, what does Samaria mean to us? That means a little bit, maybe the U.S. and to the ends of the earth, the whole world. So he starts from in and he goes out. He goes, you'll be my witnesses. You're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Come on, guys. Listen, this is for real. This is good stuff. You need to know that his first directive says you're going to receive power. Now, check this out. So the church is birthed. So I want you to go to chapter 4. And I'm only going to give you a couple of verses here, but I want you to go to chapter 4, and in starting in verse 17, uh, let's do verses 17 and uh, 17. Uh, let's do verses 17 to 20. Who can do that for me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. This is, Acts, right? uh, this is in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead, Raina. Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have been and heard. What which you have seen and heard. Amen. So 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 listen listen to this. What is going on here? Peter and John were just at the temple. They just finished 
praying for a man for, for 40 years. Every single person in the city knew he was crippled. He used to beg at the temple gate. Peter and John are there, and that's the famous Bible verse where he says, "Silver." when, when the man was asking for money, Peter said, silver and gold I don't have on me right now. He says, but what I do have, I'm going to give you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Boom, the guy gets healed. People start hearing about this. There's a big ruckus in the city because everybody knew that guy was healed. Everybody knew that that guy for 40 years had been at the gate and was crippled. So what I'm saying to you is this, is that they get arrested and they get arrested and all of a sudden they're, they're being put before the Sanhedrin. So these religious leaders and they, listen, listen to the directive. What are we going to do with these guys? They need to stop speaking in the name of Jesus. How are you going to stop any move of God or any church move or any growth anywhere relating to God? Just don't use the name of Jesus. Don't use the name of Jesus. But if you start using that name, that's how the church begins to grow. And it's easy to say God loves you, you know, but God these days means a whole bunch of things. But when you say Jesus loves you, you're talking about the Son of God who died on the cross for the sins of the world. And, and, and listen, I wish there were many ways, but there's one way, and his name is Jesus, and he loves you. And, 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 and that's the way to the Father. And it's a free gift. Freely, we, freely, he, it's not free because he paid for it, but it's free for us to receive. Amen? So these guys are sitting there. They tell them, you can't preach in the name of Jesus. So I don't know if anyone has the NIV version. I don't know if, uh, is there anybody here who has the NIV version? Um, like, the, no, but someone who can, who can read? <laughs> is it ready? Does anyone have an NIV that can read? Yeah, go ahead, Mary. So read it in verse, verse 20, um, verse 21 to, uh, go ahead and read verse 21 to 24. Yeah, okay, verse 21 to 24. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. Keep going. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Okay, so listen. So on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Why did they raise their voices in prayer to God? Because the attack was this. They wanted them to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. So they began to pray. Now check this out. There's a reason they began to pray. Because Peter and John, as much as you want to think that they were brave or that they, they were fearless, they did walk in fear. They did have fear on them. And I'm going to prove it to you in a second. So check this out. So they, they continue to pray. Now, verse 29 says this, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God, what? Boldly, boldly or with boldness. They began to pray. Consider their threats. And they said, Lord, stretch out your hand. No, I'm sorry. Let me go to verse 29. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Guys, let me just say this to you. If you're going to speak and you want to do this for God, like I'm talking about if you just want to live the, the real New Testament life, and I want to say this as a challenge. Please don't take this as a as a chastening or anything like that at all. This is an encouragement. Can I tell you, because listen, I'm processing this in my own life, but a New Testament life looks like this. I share about the goodness of God. I share of, of what Jesus has done for me. 
I share my testimony of salvation. I share of God's goodness. And here's what he said. Listen, I love this. Peter prayed. He didn't pray, Lord, help me to stretch out my hand. He said, Lord, stretch out your hand that people may be healed, that signs, wonders, and miracles may be done by my holy, by, by the holy servant Jesus. Guys, let me tell you, when you stretch out your hands in faith, you're stretching out the hands of God. You're not God, but God is working through you. You stretch out your hands. Did you see the scripture? Come on now. Did you see what I just read in scripture? So he says this, after they play, prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now listen, so when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, again, they spoke the word of God boldly. Can I challenge you in something? A spirit-led life is part of the new covenant in Christ Jesus. We must be led by the Spirit. And how does that happen? It takes time to develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And we need to ask Him to fill us and fill us. Listen, I'm a pastor of a church and I ask the Holy Spirit to fill me every day. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Fill me, Holy Spirit. I was talking to someone today and I knew for a fact when they, I said, what are you doing? When I tell you they have CNN on all the time, I was just like, man, you got to be careful what you're ingesting. I'm not, I don't have nothing against CNN, but I'm just talking about in general, you, you're putting this news in and it's bad news, bad news, bad news, divisive news, all these different things. Uh, listen, you need to put inside of yourself things that are going to give you faith. They're going to encourage you in the spirit. So this guy, Peter, this, go to Ephesians chapter 6. Now, I handed you the prayer of Ephesians 6 that, that I had written out. It's, it's a prayer that you can pray over yourself. So Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, you guys know what just happened here. He just finished praying over all these weapons. He says, we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against principalities, power, spiritual wickedness in high places. The rule is the darkness of this world. Amen. That's what we wrestle. That's what we wrestle against. Not people. You wrestle against those things. He starts talking about the armor of God, all these powerful things that you have. Many defensive weapons and one offensive weapon, which is the word of God. So he goes through all of this, right? Sounds powerful. L listen to the end of the chapter. So verse 19, pray also for me. Listen to this. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Everyone, guys, listen, this is the apostle Peter. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? This is Peter. This is the guy who walked with Jesus. This guy saw Jesus. This guy went to the tomb. This guy ran to the tomb. This guy was there when Mary knocked on the door and said, I saw him. This guy was on the road at, and, and, and Jesus walked with him. And he's the guy who said, didn't our hearts burn with us? This is the guy where Jesus said, do you love me? Feed my sheep. This is the guy that was there when the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts chapter 2. And this guy still years later is asking that he would, he said, pray for me. Pray for me that I would fearlessly declare the gospel. Do I believe that that is ever going to go away? I don't know. But I tell you this, if you struggle with fear or maybe rejection, and rejection deals with fear anyway, because rejection is all about this. I fear that you don't like me. I fear that I'm not accepted by you. But if we come in love and we come, think, let me ask you a deep, deep, serious question. Do you believe that the Holy Ghost, some, the Holy Spirit somewhere, somehow was speaking to somebody to tell, that, to tell that guy who shot up all those people, 
You don't think that God was trying to tell somebody, speak to that guy, pray for that guy. I'm not saying someone did it because we all have free will. He, he could have rejected it. He was obviously demonic. But I, my brain thinks like that. So this is what my brain thinks like. What if um, I studied a little bit on, on, Mar on uh, Marilyn Manson? You know, and he, he was the guy who on stage would rip up Bibles and still does and, and all these things. And he was big back when I was a youth pastor. But I had read something, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but I had heard that, that the first time he went to church, he went to a youth group, and they were picking teams, like partnering with people, and no one picked him. And he said, that was the last time I went into a church. What if somebody would have saw the one person standing there and would have embraced him and said, Hey, listen, I know where it's teams of two, but why don't you come on my team? What if one of the leaders, what if the pastor would have said, hey, that kid's by himself. I'll be his team member. Maybe his life would have been different. Instead of ripping up Bibles, he would have been reading Bibles. You see what I'm saying? So, so when, when, when I begin to, th when me personally, when I begin to think like that, I begin to think of how many people have been hurt by church people. How many people have been hurt by religion? How many people have been hurt? And you know what? When we go out, I want to love on people. I want to. I want to. I want to bless people. I want to encourage people. And we're gonna to be able to do that. You're gonna have to tackle fear. But I do believe this. I believe after the first person you speak to, you you're gonna be like hooked. <laughs> That's all I can tell you is that you're just going to want to continue to minister to people. So I want to read this one more time. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Guys, let me say this to you. We're going to pray in a little bit. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to just fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us. Because scripturally speaking, he says, I'll pour out my spirit. And he says, you'll be my witnesses. And could it be that we just need a dose of the Holy Ghost, you know, to be that witness that we need to be? Nini, can you hand me those papers right behind you uh, right there, that stack of papers and stuff? Okay, so, so here, here's what I want to do. And all the Facebook Live people, um, um, Claudia can do something with this, maybe get it on there and stuff. <clears throat> but this is good. So we're going to do, we have a bunch of act. We're by the way, we're in L.A., which I'm sure you know. So we have a bunch of actors in here and musicians and all kinds of stuff. So this will be easy to do. You can picture yourself doing this. Can you just take one and pass it down um, and give me the extras if you don't mind? <clears throat> so I want to walk you through something real quick, okay? I'm going to stand for this. Um, if you don't mind, <clears throat> so I want you to take this, <clears throat> let me grab my paper, and hopefully my microphone will stay on me, all right? So I want to help you. I want to help you. I'm going to give you, I want to go over a guide with you. Um, when I say this to you as a guide, um, um, I want to I wanna preface by saying to you that when you walk up to someone, you walk up to anyone, if your heart is pulled towards a person. If I go up to Mary and I don't know Mary, I may feel something in my heart to ask her about like, hey, you know, I, I just was walking by you and do you have pain in your body? Someone it may just be like, hey, I just feel like, is everything okay with you? Can I pray for you about something? There are many ways to begin to talk to people, and we want to be moved by love. Let me just say this to you. Between now, these next seven days, would you ask God that he would fill you with love for people? Because if you love people, even if you're rejected, it doesn't matter because you love them. And they're not rejecting you anyway. They're, the Bible says they're rejecting him. So, so here's the thing. Goal number one. What is goal number one? Goal number one is to dialogue with people and create an avenue for prayer. Hold on. I, I, I do need one thing. 
uh, right behind you, I think, is like a thin box. My bad. I, I, uh, that, that one right behind it. Yes. Sorry about that. Sorry for the delay. Okay. So check this out. So this is what, this is what I'm talking about. I want you to, um, take one, uh, and pass it down. Okay. So take one of these and pass them down. So we created, um, you know, we have, um, we have our Thanksgiving celebration that's coming up on November 19. Okay. So we created this awesome invite card. Now, let me say this to you. So I want you guys to follow me. If you can give me these next 10 minutes, I promise you we're going to go right into prayer. God's going to move powerfully. It's going to be awesome. But listen, listen to what I'm saying to you. This is a tool that's in your hand. This can create conversation. And so I wrote this down because I wanted you to have an idea. If you've never, just make believe you've never done this before. Just appease me. Let's say you've, none of you have ever done this before. So I'm speaking to, hey, I've never done this. I've never gone out and talked to anyone. So what does that look like? So here's the deal, okay? 7 p.m., we're going to meet together. We're going to pray. 7.30, we're going to split up into groups, and we're going to go love on people in USC. So, so what does that look like? Let me tell you for myself the most effective way uh, for me that has worked, okay? And then listen, when you're engaging people, you may be led completely to do something else. God may be moving you. You may just pray for a sick body right there. And, you know, but here's the deal. So this is what this looks like. Your number one goal is to dialogue with people and create an avenue for prayer. Your number one goal next week is not to hand this card out. Next week is not about this card. This is on the bottom of the totem pole. The number one goal is to engage conversation with people. That's the number one goal. This is just a tool. So here's the thing. Tool to open our, our conversation is our Thanksgiving card. Of course, we have the Word of God. You have your testimony. Your testimony is such a powerful thing. Share your testimony about what the Lord did for you. That always works. You, you have love in your heart. Listen, if you have love in your heart when you're talking to people, you won't fail. Uh, the Holy Spirit, He's going to give you power as you share. Listen, the Holy Spirit gives you power to be a witness. And when you speak, the Holy Spirit is the one who's confirming the words to those people that are listening. So let's move on. Scenario number one, question. So I go up to someone, hey, uh, are you guys going to be in town for Thanksgiving? Okay, so that's scenario number one. Are you, hey, Mary, are, what's your name, Mary? Hey, are you going to be in Thanksgiving, uh, you know, here for Thanksgiving next week? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, hey, listen, here, here's a card. Uh, my church is having um, a, a free event. We're going to be cooking lunch on Sunday. Man, I would love for you to go. It's free. You can invite, invite anyone you want. More than likely, because I've done this so many times, they're going to say thank you. Okay, great. Um, and I, I wrote that down. Great, just wanted to invite you to a thanks and giving celebration on Sunday, November 19th. It's at my church. We'll be serving a free Thanksgiving lunch. Would love for you to come. Response, thank you. Dialogue approach, okay? So here's taking things to a next step because now you create a dialogue with the person. Is there anything I can pray for you or your family? Is there anything I can pray? Mary, is there anything I can pray for you or, 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 for your, or your family? Because I believe prayer works, so I would love to do that for you. I use that line all the time because I do want to pray for them. I do want to minister to them. I don't know where they're hurting. I don't know what's going on. I pray for a lot of grandmas. I pray for a lot of people that are facing situations, financial situations. My marriage is falling apart, all these different things. People need prayer. Prayer works. So why wouldn't I want to pray for him? So, so the answer, yes. So prayer, whatever they request, of course, whatever they need prayer for, maybe they need a job, we pray for that. Or maybe they need, pre, uh, uh, and of course, whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you. So you, this is, happens a lot. You start praying for someone and, you know, and this has happened to me. I start praying like, hey, I need a job. I'm really struggling in here. And I was like, hey, do you have a brother who's, who's in trouble? And they're just like, oh, my gosh, how did you know that? Well, that's because the Lord starts ministering to you and giving them, you know, a word. And that takes things, of course, to another level. OK, so what is level two? Or what I would consider level two? Um, I know this is personal, but how is your relationship with God doing? At the end of the day, guys, listen, isn't that really what it's all about? 
where are they with God? Where are they with God? Let's say they walk away from you and you're, oh, what a nice person. But, but man, really the nitty gritty is where is their relationship with God? Where's your relationship? And, and you know, it's like this. It's like you just, you just you put it out there and they're going to say, well, you know, th- some people say, hey, that's personal. I don't want to talk about that. Um, uh, my, my relationship with God is fine. Uh, I, you know what? Not so good. Or, you know, I don't know. I, I used to go to church, this, that, and the other. And then you just create dialogue and just like, well, where are you at, man? You know, I mean, you know, uh, you, you might share your testimony at that point. But you see what I'm saying? But so, so here's the thing. So let, um, in level three, I call this level three. Level three may be saying, hey, do you have any pain in your body? Because I want to pray healing right now. And we've been studying on this. Jesus is a healer, right, guys? Jesus heals. He's, uh, there's so many testimonies and miracles of Jesus healing. So, so um, turn over your paper. Scenario number two. So I, lo- I love going through this because, because it just shows you different scenarios. So question, hey, are you guys going to be in town for Thanksgiving? No. Okay. If you know anyone who is, see, see what I'm saying? So if you know anyone who is, can you please invite them to a free event we're doing on Sunday, November 19th? Sure. Okay. Hey, before you go, is there anything I could pray for you or your family? You see how it always goes to that? It always goes to that. It always goes to that. Can I pray for you or your family? Yes. So, and I wrote there, same as above. And if they say no, hey, God bless you. No, I don't need prayer. Cool. God bless you. God loves you. That's cool, right? All right. Scenario number three, getting a little tough here. Hey, are you guys going to be in town for Thanksgiving? No. Question. Okay. If you know anyone who is, can you please invite them to a free free event we're doing? No. (coughs) No problem. Before I go, is there anything I could pray for you or your family? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, so you always bring it around to, you know, and I'm not trying to be so structural with you guys, but what I'm saying is like I have found for myself personally. So whoever's on my, on, on, and, and it broke, when we break up in the teams, if you're with me, you're going to hear me use this because it just, it just works, you know? And, and one thing that I found is people are very, um, open to receiving prayer um, for, you know, a, a need in their life because prayer works. So here's the thing. Fear, if there is a real hell, if hell is real, so don't get mad at me if you're watching on Facebook or anything else. I didn't create hell. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even prepared for man, you know, uh, and if hell is real, if separation from God is real, why would we want anyone to go there? Because God doesn't want them to go there. All they need to hear is the good, loving message of Jesus Christ. We wouldn't want anyone to go there. I, I'm glad. So, do you know that for years, and I'll finish with this, for years when I was a kid, I would go to Win dixie that was near my house, and I would ride my bike there. And year after year, when I was in middle school, part of high school, I would go there, and I would go into Winn-Dixie, and I would buy, like, potato chips or drinks or something for myself. Next door, there was, next door to the Winn-Dixie, right next door, there was an entrance to something that had, you know, like when you put that silver, that silver, uh, like, uh, covering on windows where you can't see in? You know, so there was the silver or the silver tint, you know, so like if you're trying to look in, you can't see inside what's going on inside. There was a silver tint tint and I would see people going in and out, in and out over the years. Do you know that after five years? No, 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 this is wrong. When I became an adult in my 20s, I found out that that was a church. Do you know how many people walk by me as I'm locking up my bike? And never once invited me into that place. Never. Never invited me. Do you know that had they done it possibly, my life could have been different? Because when I got when I received Jesus, I'm telling you right now, I was heading for jail if I didn't change my life. And God rescued me just in the nick of time when I was 19. But it wasn't until I was like 20, 21, I found out that was a church. 
Not one person, I, I, can't, I can't even believe that, not one person stopped and said, hey, young man, you know, would you like to come to our youth ministry? Later on, I met those pastors. I never told them the story, but I'm just saying, I can't even believe that. My life could have been different because I believe Jesus changes lives. So what we need is, is the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the only thing. I can, I can sit there and tell you all kinds of things and whatever. The Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us. And so I just want to pray for, for, next, um, for next week. And um, I know there's people watching, just so you know, um, we've been doing this for about eight weeks now. So this is sort of like the, the final time that we're getting together um, and uh, talking about these things. So I um, just want to encourage you guys that um, this, is, this, is, this is the real deal, you know, where we, I, I just promise you this, um, I don't know, Marilyn, I mean, would you would you mind just sharing real quick, like what's been going on with you? Because, uh, you know, just how you've been feeling, and because you've been in all these studies, of course, this is, you know, this is your home. But um, for me, I've been, I, I find myself desiring to immerse myself in the Word. So I've been spending my free time just listening to teaching, reading, and, and praising and worshiping. And, and as I'm doing that, I'm finding a boldness. Uh, someone said, but you are bold. But uh, a different type of boldness stirring up in me. And I went to Vegas this past week to do a show. And while I was in Vegas, someone walked up to me and wanted to, he said, I've been waiting for a year to talk to you. Wow. Because I, I just need your, I need wisdom. And so I sat and had lunch with him. I told him about how much Jesus loves him. I said, I, I just told, he shared with me what was going on, and I shared with him. And I, I had to tell him about Christ. I had to tell him how much God loves him. And I had to tell him how, how God has so many great things in store for him, what he wants to do in his life. And, and just, we talked for about two hours. That was a lunch break. And then I go back to the office and someone walks up to me and she says, I've got such a headache. And I said, <coughs> okay, hold on just a second. Let me come around. Let's, let's go find a quiet place. And I took her to a quiet place, prayed over her. She said, I feel like going to sleep right now. She said, I don't know what just happened. Something happened. I, I, I feel like going to sleep. She said, oh, that was so good. The Holy Spirit just came in like a flood. It was just amazing. And then I'm driving in the truck with a guy, with her husband. He's the driver of our vans. He looked at me and he says, Marilyn, please pray for my grandmother because she they're sending her home to die. Mm -hmm. and, and I got out of the, I said, okay, got out of the truck, got back in about an hour later with him. And I said, now let's talk about your grandmother. And then I prayed with him for his grandmother, went into the hotel to give something to, to, to Winsom, came back out. He was talking to his mother and was, had just hung up. I said, don't hang up, let's pray for your mother. Mm -hmm. So we, he got his mother back on the phone, we prayed and she just started crying. Then went back to the office and something else happened and started praying again. And it was just that all I wanted was them to know how much they were loved and that God saw them exactly where they were. And, and that's, been, that's just been so heavy on me. So coming back from Vegas, I get in the car with this lady who was very interesting. I said, so how's your day going? Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, it's okay. And I said, okay, what's okay? I mean, what's wrong with your day? She said, eh, you know, nothing, but eh, it's, I guess it's okay. I said, but if something's wrong, why can't you have a great day? Something must be wrong. She said, I never have a great day. I just have an okay day. And I said, oh, let's pray about that. We need to pray about that. She said, it ain't that bad. <laughs> I said, yeah, but we just, I said, I said, we just got to pray about that because you need to have a great day. So I prayed with her, told her how much God loved her, and 
then I got out of the car and I said, now have an amazing day. She's looking at me like, yeah. what, what just happened? <laughs> so, I mean, that was just my whole week. Yeah. And, and, and so it's just been a, that desire just, just to have more of him. Yeah. And, and as I desire it, I'm hungry. So guys, that, guys, I want to I want to say this to you. I I listen what I tell you. I am absolutely positive about what I'm gonna of what I'm gonna say to you. I'm absolutely positive. If you take the time to minister to a person, I'm telling you this. Listen, would you just trust me what I'm saying to you? I guarantee. Number one, whatever you're going through, what let's say it's a level eight, it'll drop down no less. To, to it'll drop down to a six or lower because because number one when you begin to do God's will which is to minister to someone else it just begins to fill you the Bible says out of your belly look out of this this directive is for every single one is listening to me out of your belly will flow rivers of living water and we said this over and over what happens to water when it just sits there and it does nothing it stagnant it becomes flies begin to fly around it turns green and all these different yucky colors and stuff but we're supposed to be a river and I just want to challenge you, you know, like this may be a huge step for some people like holy smokes wait wait I don't know if I could do this I'm just telling you just come and even if you just watch and pray as as we like talk to people it is going to it's, it's going to bless you and this is not just about next week I'm talking about start looking at this paper now. Try it tomorrow. Try it tomorrow. Get it, get it, you know, get it in your heart, you know, because it, it's going to bless you. But I can keep going on and on about that. Um, I want you to stand to your feet because we're gonna we're gonna take time to pray. Thank you,